next we will look into another very important issue in testing which is known as test completion. So, basically when we are uh, storing the patterns in the te automatic test equipment, we need to have number of uh, patterns uh, small less and if it is, uh, but that is always that is not always possible because it is not that uh, if we use a uh, small number of patterns we will get good coverage. So, that is not going to happen. So, we need to uh, have uh, large number of patterns, but storing them becomes an issue. So, we want to uh, store them in a compressed fashion. Similarly, when we are talking about the response part, so response part also we uh, may not be willing to store all the responses. So, we want to we may like to store some um, uh, some compressed version of those responses so that are these are the two things that we will look into in this chapter. So, compression we will be to look at so first we will look into an introduction then test stimulus compression how can we compress the test patterns then test response compression compaction how can we compact the responses and then uh, some industry practices and then the conclusion. Why do we need test compression? So, it is one thing is the test data volume, test time and test pins. So, you see that uh, if, if we have uh, got a typical test pattern application environment uh, for external testing, we have got an automated test equipment and there is a memory and this is the circuit for which we want to test. Now, the these test patterns are to be transported uh, from this uh, from this memory to the circuit and then they are to be applied to the circuit and then the response has to be collected. So, one thing is that if this memory requirement is large, then that will uh, increase the cost of the ATE. Similarly, if I uh, if I want to do, uh, uh, transfer a large number of patterns over uh, uh, this uh, line, then serial communication is not a very uh, effective one. So, we have to have parallel communication. Now, how many such parallel lines can be drawn, how many such parallel channels can be there or pins can be there. So, that is another issue. So, this cost of the ATE it is dependent on the number of uh, uh, these pins that we have that is the ATE channel width and the memory that we require that to store the patterns. And the test time is also increasing because of this uh, uh, large volume of data that we need to transfer. So, test time will also increase. So, it is better that we store these uh, patterns in a compressed form in the ATE and we transfer the compressed sequences to the circuit and at the circuit before applying the patterns. So, we have got some sort of uh, uh, we have got some sort of uh, decompressing mechanism by which this pattern we get back the original patterns and then those patterns are applied to the circuit. So, this is the thing. So, what we essentially mean is that here the it will be the patterns will be stored in a compressed form and then before the it is applied to the circuit we have got another module which we call decompressor. This decompressor module, so this will be uh, de this will decompress the patterns that we have got from the ATE and it will get back the it will get back get back the original patterns and the patterns will be loaded into the circuit. So, why can we compress test data? because the deterministic test vectors they have do not care. So, the, 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 the ATPG algorithms they have generated the test patterns where the bits which are not required to be set for particular uh, faults to be tested. So, they are left as do not care. So, these do not care can be exploited so that we can uh, we can match between the patterns and a number of patterns may lead to uh, a, a one representative one that can uh, that can replace all of them. That way we can achieve the test completion. So this is the situation: the test data volume versus gate count. So if gate count is increasing in terms of mega uh, mega gates, so the and the volume of test data so it is increasing in terms of gigabits. So so as the circuit size is increasing. So, you see this uh, the so many million gates. So, this is uh, this is increasing the uh, volume of test data is increasing at, a, at an exponential rate. So, this is a requirement that we must have some sort of test compression mechanism incorporated. Now, this test compression can broadly be divided into two categories. One is the stimulus compression 
and another is the response compression. So, in this stimulus compression we are talking about the test patterns. So, we compress the test pattern, so that uh, we did need to store less information on the ATE and the response compaction we mean that we, we are storing uh, we are we are will be compacting the response that we get from the circuit. Maybe I have got 10,000 patterns, but I do not uh, store all the 10,000 responses. So, I store only maybe a part of the responses, maybe in some uh, compressed form, maybe in some uh, modified form, and then we compare uh, we, we do a comparison with that modified uh, response only. So, we have got this uh, so this response compaction. So, it has got space compaction, space compaction it will try to reduce the number of outputs. Like if a circuit has got 100 outputs, maybe we pass it through a space compactor that will uh, reduce the number of outputs to less say 10 or 20. Similarly, we have got time compaction. So, time compaction, so this will be uh, reducing the, uh, oh, so we do not store the pat response for all the 10,000 patterns. So, we will look into less number of uh, instances and then we have got mixed time and space compaction. So, that is that is a combination of these two. On the other hand, for the stimulus compression also there are several techniques. Some of them are code based schemes. So, we use some codes for doing the compression. Then there are some linear decompression based schemes. So, linear decompression based schemes. So, they will be trying to uh, uh, use some sort of linear structures like LFSR to uh, perform this compression and there are broadcast scan based schemes. So, this is the typical situation of test compression. So, we have got this low cost ATE. So, as I was telling that the cost of the ATE is too large and if you are having uh, uh, if you are uh, using one ATE low cost ATE, then the cost of the ATE is uh, determined by the memory requirement and the memory that it has and the number of channels. Okay. So, if we are uh, so if we are designing a new new versions of chips or new chips that are having more uh, that are more number of test patterns or more number of chip pins to be uh, for testing, then it does not mean that we should go for a new ATE altogether, because the ATE investment will be a big question. So, we somehow we have to use this uh, low cost ATE itself for testing this uh, high end chip. So, how to do this thing? So, for that purpose in the in the ATE we will store the patterns in a compressed form, the compressed stimulus. So, they will come to the circuit and before they are applied to the circuit under test. So, they are going it is it is passed through a decompressor stage. So, decompressor will convert this pattern into the stimulus the compressed stimulus into the actual stimulus and then this uh, after this uh, uh, this circuit has given the response. So, it is uh, they are the outputs are collected by a compactor the response compactor and this response compactor the compacted response will be coming back to the ATE. So, comparison uh, will be done in with respect to this compacted response only. The ATE will be compare will be comparing with respect to this compacted response only. So, many a time the circuit under test we will call it core. So, this is the this actually this test compression problem is more uh, vital when we are having core based designs. So, in core based designs what happens is that for the entire system we take cores from different vendors. So, cores are maybe a soft description of the system may be netlist, le netlist level description. So, for a system that has got a CPU memory and say you know, one I O controller. So, we may take the netlist for CPU, netlist for memory and netlist for I O controller from different vendors and integrate onto the same silicon uh, floor to get the whole system. So, to get the system on chip type of concept. Now, in this process uh, now, how do we test the CPU? Like I do not know the uh, I do not know the netlist of the C I do not know the high level description the structural description of the CPU. Now, I cannot generate the test patterns for that. For the test patterns also I have to rely on the vendor. Okay. So, these are called cores. So, core vendors they are also providing the test patterns and they are telling me that okay, if you apply these test patterns and if you get this type of response then the core has been fabricated properly. Now, so that way what has happened is if you are integrating large number of cores then the amount of uh, test data that you have. So, that is also increasing significantly and the core vendor since the core vendor does not know about the situation into which this core will be uh, going to be placed. Uh, 
uh, then uh, uh, they, they cannot optimize on the test pattern, they cannot reduce the number of test patterns. So, they try to cover as many situations as possible, so that way the test pattern set become huge and that test pattern set is given to the um, uh, int system integrator who takes all these codes and integrate into a system. So, that way the integrator uh, uh, has got no option, but to apply all those test patterns. So, that is why this uh, uh, the exponential increase in the test pattern size is uh, their test set size uh, that we have seen. So, that is becoming more uh, prominent. So, stimulus compression. So, as we have said that there can be code based scheme, linear decompression based schemes and broadcast scan based schemes. Now, Coast code based schemes, they can there are four different examples that we will look into for and they represent uh, four different categories. Okay. The first one is fixed to fixed. So, that means, uh, so your uh, test stimulus portion that we want to take for coding that is also fixed and the code that is generated. So, that is also fixed. So, input and output bo both of their widths are fixed. Half uh, then there is a uh, there is a fixed variable coding where the uh, input stimulus chunk that we take for coding uh, that is that size is fixed, but the length of the code is not fixed that is variable. So, then we have got uh, variable to fixed. So, he here we have got this thing the, uh, the input chunk length is variable, but the code that is generated that is of fixed length and we have got variable to variable where the both uh, input chunk and the code they are variable. So, we will pick up individual categories and try to see how those uh, codings can be done. So, this fixed to fixed uh, coding. So, this is typically known as dictionary based coding. So, basically uh, we maintain a dictionary of codes and for depending upon the uh, input sequence. So, we ta take it take the code from the dictionary and uh, uh, put it use it for coding. Similarly, fixed to variable coding we have got Huffman code which is a lossless compression and then this one. Uh, run length code is there for variable to fixed and golem code for variable to variable. One thing that we should keep in mind that this test stimulus compression it has to be lossless. Like if you look into this diagram, so uh, at this point I really want the original test patterns back. Okay. So, this uh, uh, um, uh, this compression whatever is done that must be a lossless compression. On the other hand this side this uh, response compaction, so response compaction need not be lossless because uh, if it is lossless then uh, the all the information are anyway there. So, we are not going to save on the uh, amount of data that we are going to transfer. So, this is uh, uh, this is this 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 in most of the cases this uh, response compaction is a lossy compaction uh, where uh, where we have got uh, less number of output bits compared to the number of input bits. Uh, however, in this case this must be lossless. So, we must be getting back the original patterns. So, the first one is known as dictionary based code. So, for understanding this, so we must understand something called a scan slice. Suppose we have got a circuit that has got uh, this scan chain, scan chain 1 to scan chain n and from the ATE, so this uh, uh, test bits are coming. So, test bits will be feeding this scan chains. Now, in each cycle, each clock cycle, so uh, each of these scan chains will be getting 1 bit of data. So, that will get shifted to the next position. So, uh, if they the, so if there are n chains then I can uh, if you consider the same bit position for each of the scan chains. So, that uh, constructs so that constitutes one scan slice. So, in the first clock cycle the first slice is loaded all the n chains they get their first bit then in the next clock cycle the next slice will be loaded. So, all the n chains will get their next bit. So, this way this loading will be done. So, what happens is that from the ATE through the channel I get a B bit uh, pattern. So, B bit pattern. So, this is used to index this dictionary and from this dictionary the corresponding test pattern is found and that is actually loading the scan slice. So, uh, the idea is that maybe uh, if I uh, if this is the full test pattern set that has got all these patterns in it if it is a full test pattern set, then we can say that okay, so we find out the slices. So, this is the first slice, this is the second slice. So, this way we find out the slices, this is the third slice. Okay. Maybe uh, this bit is uh, 
same so if i take the first slice maybe the first slice is 10001 that means to the first scan chain i will give one second scan chain zero third scan chain zero fourth scan chain zero fifth scan chain one if there are five scan chains similarly in the next slice so this is for the first one for the second slice i may have 00010 so that is the next bit that will be fed into the five scan chain so this is the uh, so this is the this is the uh, this, this is actually the slices so this uh, fa first actually uh, uh, this is uh, if if this is the test pattern this is the full test pattern so this full test pattern is going to be fed to five different scan chains so i can say that it is divided into say five different portions and this part is going to feed the first scan chain this is for scan chain 1 this is for scan chain 2 this is for scan chain 3 scan chain 4 and scan chain 5 now out of that if you consider the first bits of each scan chain so this one so they will constitute one slice so this is basically one such slice now if you consider the second bit of each scan chain like this this one so that will constitute the second uh, slice so this is the second slice so this is actually the uh, formation of slices now they are going to be fed to uh, the all the scan chains uh, in this fashion now what we do in the dictionary we uh, try to see the for the uh, say for this one this 10001 so if i in the dictionary if i store all this pattern all the scan chain all the slices that are going to occur so if i put them on a dictionary Okay, so this is the dictionary. Now, if this pattern one zero 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 one is stored in this position, okay, then it is uh, sufficient that from the tester I just tell what is the index i. Okay, so this index i is told so that uh, this uh, decompressor i that I said so this decompressor is actually having the dictionary. So from this channel I just get this index i, and this index i is used to locate the corresponding pattern okay so this 10001 and this 10001 will be fed into the, into the scan chain slice like in this example that we were uh, uh, looking into so here this b bits that are coming from the channel from uh, of the tester so dictionary is a part of the decompressor so decompress that particular slice is located and that uh, slice is outputted onto this uh, uh, onto individual scan chains okay one bit for each scan cell is each scan chain now naturally if uh, so uh, if the uh, if my test pattern set is such that it generates uh, uh, different types of slices uh, different types of slices so all possible slices are generated then of course there is uh, no saving okay so we cannot uh, save anything in the dictionary because the, the dictionary will become too large but if it happens that only few slice only uh, some some slices are there uh, it is not that all possible slices are appearing as a, as a as part of this test test pattern sequence then of course uh, if the total of, of possible slices are less then this dictionary can be of finite size and then dictionary uh, whatever slices we have so uh, that are stored into this dictionary so dictionary size is finite so we can uh, put it into the into a, as a part of the decompressor okay so this is the dictionary based coding so fixed to fixed uh, number of coding so the saving that we can have is that from the dictionary i am getting b bits so in the uh, in, in the tester i need to store only the b bits okay uh, for individual slices now uh, from the uh, dictionary so uh, the dictionary size is of course a factor but uh, otherwise there can be saving the next one is a code based scheme which is known as uh, uh, which where it is a fixed to variable length coding which is known as huffman coding now you see that suppose uh, this is the test pattern set that we have now in that we see that how many times this pattern 0010 has occurred so 0010 if you count so this is occurring once here 0010 then this is once this is once then this is one so if in this way if you count so you see that this particular pattern has occurred 22 times okay 
then we find that the next pattern 0 1 0 0 it has occurred 13 times. So, what we do we find out this uh, individual patterns and count how many times they have occurred. This particular patterns like uh, uh, 111010101 0 0 and 1001. 0 0 1. So, they have not occurred at all. So, their frequency is 0, but uh, others have occurred like this. So, in a fixed dictionary structure, fixed to fixed length coding, what we would have done is uh, we will store all this S0 to S12, these uh, patterns onto the dictionary, and for decoding, we will just send the index of the dictionary. But what happens is that uh, uh, for, uh, for every, uh, since there are 12 entries, so for every uh, uh, for every slice, I need to send a 4 bit address, the B is has, has to be 4 bit. So, that increases the, uh, uh, that increases the uh, uh, complexity in the sense that the dictionary size and your uh, this thing, uh, uh, the bits that we need to transfer will be more. So, instead of doing that, what we can do, we can uh, code it using some Huffman coding strategy. We can code it using some Huffman coding strategy, such that the highest occurring pattern. So, this will be coded with 1 0, then the next pattern that is uh, that is coded with 0 0 2 bits, the next uh, occurring pattern is coded with 1 1 0, next occurring pattern is coded with 0 1 0 like that. So, you see that uh, uh, after uh, when it uh, gets this uh, bits, uh, so when it uh, when the decoder will get this particular bit sequence. So, it will be um, it will uh, it will work like this say say it gets uh, a 0. So, one, one, once it gets a 0, so from uh, the, so if we look into this structure uh, into say this is the circuit uh, this is the uh, AT from where I am getting the bits. So, this is coming to the uh, decompressor or decoder this is coming to the decompressor. Now, if we get a 0 at the line, then we know that the next bit. Uh, so, we, we from we come to this side and then we again if we get a 0, we know that we have uh, the symbol that is we are referring to is S 1. So, this S 1 is 0 0. So, you, so you see that this is the pattern. So, it we have de we have detected that that the, the A T is trying to send the pattern. Uh, S 1, which corresponds to 0 1 0 0. Instead of setting, send, sending this 4 bits, the uh, A T E could send only these 2 bits and that is sufficient to uh, identify this particular pattern. Similarly, if after getting 0, if I get a 1 okay, on this uh, A T E channel, that means it is, uh, uh, so I could not, uh, I could not come to any decision, I have to go for the next uh, input as well. So, this is 0. So, if the next input is also 0, then I know that this is S 3. So, 0 1 0 is the code for S 3. So, you see 0 1 0 is the code for S 3. So, we do, so, if we have come to this point, so we know that this is going to be a, uh, this is going to be the pattern that we are looking for. So, this is the, mm, the way this, uh, uh, this Huffman coding will work, fixed variable length coding. Now, another so this way the, this coding works so for all these entries so they are to be we have to have this uh, big uh, sorry we have to store this uh, big uh, tree into the decoder and the decoder will follow this tree to uh, do the operation okay so to, to find out the actual um, actual code actual pattern that it uh, needs to construct from the code that is transmitted so, that is known as that is the Huffman code. Now, you see that what has happened is that the uh, patterns whose frequency is more, they have been coded with lesser length code. So, this is uh, it, its frequency is the highest. So, it has been coded with 1 0. Next one is 13. So, that has been coded with 0 0. So, this way the, the coding has been done. And also, we can see that the way the coding is done is that we try to group the patterns. Okay. So, this S 1, S 3, S 4, so we, uh, we write them, uh, we just uh, say this S 0, S 1, S 2, S 3. So, we just write them in a sequence and then the lowest occurring pattern, so they are grouped. So, S 11, S 12, since they are occurring the least amount of time, so they are grouped into one node whose occurrence is, uh, this occurrence becomes 2. So, the individual occurrences were 1. 
So, I can say when I combine these two into one group, the occurrence is 2. Similarly, S9 and S10, so they are occurring one only, so they are combined into two, so these are also combined into two. Now, uh, so after this has been done, so we are actually at this level. So, we have got these occurrences of patterns which are two. Now, again we combine these two occurrence groups, so two and two, so that uh, gives us four. Uh, similarly, this gives us four. So, in this way, you see the pattern S 0 which is occurring 22 times. So, this is coming at a much higher level in this tree and in the decoding process. So, this is given a code like 1 0 whereas, for this pattern S 2 L. So, it is given a code like 1 1 1 1 1 1 so many. So, that, that is a uh, 6 bit coding. So, this S 2 L has been coded with a 6 bit coding whereas, S 0 has been coded with a 2 bit coding. So, since S 0 will be uh, S 0 is occurring more frequently. So, S 0 will be sent more number of times. So, it will lead to saving compared to this uh, S 12. In, in the normal case in the uh, fixed to fixed length dictionary case, what will happen is that both S 0 and S 12 they will be coded with same number of bits. As a result, the saving will be less, but in this case since we are uh, uh, doing it on a uh, lesser uh, more frequently occurring numbers. So, they are giving given less code, less uh, white code. So, they are uh, we can uh, have some saving. 